There are several here uh, from the Ron Paul organization. Ron Paul, candidate for president in the, uh, the Republican Party, is a very good friend of mine. He's extremely principled. And I feel strongly that one of the greatest things that you can do for the movement is to support the Ron Paul presidency, even if you think, because it is an uphill battle, that he may not be able to win the nomination or the presidency. We will never have probably a better opportunity in this, your lifetime or mine, to find out how many potentially good people we have in this United States willing to stand up for liberty. He's got the capability of bringing together right, principled left, libertarians, and everyone in the independent middle who really understands that this war in Iraq is not in the best interest of America, nor our own personal interest. There isn't much that we can do other than support Ron Paul. I think if we did one thing, we will build this movement more in the next six months by supporting Ron Paul than any other thing that we can do. You know a lot of the people I've seen you at meetings before. I've talked to these groups for many, many years. This is the only time where we had significant increase of numbers. So I support, even though I usually don't support political causes because I use it, I, I believe it's a lost cause. I support Ron Paul financially because I believe this will do more to build the mo movement. We are bringing in independents, principled liberals, and what I mean by principled Democrats or liberals are people who just have a soft part of their heart, and that's why they bought into socialism. It isn't because they're communists or that they want to take away liberty. They just have a soft spot. They don't see the hidden victims of socialism. They're educatable, and Ron Paul is educating them. He's turning them into independents and then turning independents into libertarians. So this is a great time to build a movement, and we need to then consolidate that when we see how many people are there and we need to have something residual to which they can rally around. Now, in terms of your helping other people, I've said this before in other venues, but don't try to convince people who are resistant. Only try to convince people who sense that something's wrong. If they haven't got enough inspiration in their brain to sense that something's wrong, don't waste your breath. You're just going to make enemies that are going to target you someday and say, he's one of those guys and he's one of those guys. Go for people who are honest and sincere in their heart and who sense that something's wrong. And you can tell. Yeah, and there's more people out there. And Ron Paul's a good way to introduce them and to test them as to their ability because he's a kindly gentleman. He's not someone who they have been able to label, even though he believes in conspiracy, he won't say so publicly. And I agree with that strategy. If you're going to run for political office, Ron Paul has done it wisely and cautiously and still comes across what? As a politician, not on your life. Comes across as a statesman. And that's who he's winning hearts and minds of people. And Trevor Lyman said in his interview when PBS asked him, well, you know, it's very unlikely, as we've heard from various people we've interviewed for this show, that you're not going to win the presidency. What's going to happen to the movement, you know, after Ron Paul, you know, loses? And Trevor Lyman says, well, this movement is bigger than Ron Paul. It's not going to die because of Ron Paul. And I'm going to make a little bit of a challenge to that. These principles that we're going to talk about tonight of sustaining the Constitution and the Bill of Rights have been around for a long time, and they've gone nowhere. We haven't been able to build a movement since Barry Goldwater that comes close to what Ron Paul is being able to do. And why is that? The man is important, I assert to you. And the reason Ron Paul is important to this movement, the reason this movement has grown and tripled and tripled again in the past year is because of Ron Paul, not the principles. Now, why do I say that? I'm a person of principle. I've studied it. I dedicated my life to the principles. But principles don't sell. Local politicians like Governor Huntsman, Huntsman or Mitt Romney, who promote a mandatory health insurance, there's nothing more evil than something that mandates the government tell you what is good for you. It's a gross violation of the basic principles of life. 
because it represents what I call an unlimited extension of lawmaking power. If you can start to mandate what government, a set of bureaucrats, thinks is beneficial for is there any limit to that? No, the only limit is what it's going to cost or what the people will finally rebel at. But there's no limit in principle to what they can mandate in the name of what's good. Certain men give an uncertain sound to their trumpet. And when you listen to Mitt Romney waffle about torture, oh, I'm not going to tell you whether waterboarding is torture. I'm not going to get into that, you know, whether or not this is torture. I mean, here's a person who had an opportunity to stand up and champion, of course it's torture. Of course it's torture. And I won't allow it as president. Can you imagine the feeling you would get if you saw a person like that take that kind of stand? Well, that's the kind of man that Ron Paul is. Ron Paul can see the nuances. He's, uh, he's very, very brilliant, in fact, uh, as well as down to earth. And that's why he makes a difference. There were at least three or four people who were converted Democrats coming over to Ron Paul because they said, I can't trust any politician anymore. None of them. But when Ron Paul speaks, I feel he's telling the absolute truth that he's uncorruptible and that no one's going to change his mind. And that's it precisely why this set of powers that be are scared to death that Ron Paul is going to win this nomination. We also need to celebrate that we have a champion. And that's why this is one of the last times we may have to really find out how much support we've got in this country for a principled approach to law. And because we have a champion who, though not charismatic, gives people who are sensitive to conscience, sensitive to truth, a feeling in their heart, this man is telling the truth. And we haven't had that for generations in this country. So I appeal to you and encourage you highly to support this man, Ron Paul. Someday, you will not be able to support this government. You can hardly do so now, even though they still say the right things. Even Bill Clinton pays homage to the Constitution. Even George Bush pays homage to the Constitution. So that's easy. But Ron Paul pays true homage to the Constitution because he lives by it. And that's why he's called Dr. No. He votes no against most everything in Congress. And that's the way that it should be. I speak to you as a fellow citizen of the United States of America, deeply concerned about the welfare of our beloved country. I am not here to tickle your ears, to entertain you. I will talk to you frankly and honestly. The message I bring is not a happy one, but it is the truth. And time is always on the side of truth. Truth must be repeated again and again, because error is constantly being preached round about. I realize that the bearer of bad news is always unpopular. As a people, we love sweetness and light, especially sweetness. I am sorry to say that all is not well in so-called prosperous, wealthy, and powerful America. We have moved a long way and are now moving further and more rapidly down the soul-destroying road of socialism. The evidence is clear, shockingly clear for all to see. With our national prestige at or near an embarrassing all-time low, we continue to weaken our domestic economy by unsound fiscal, economic, and foreign aid policies which corrupt our national currency. With the crass unconstitutional usurpation of power by the executive branch of the federal government, anti-spiritual decisions of the Supreme Court, all apparently approved by a weakly submissive rubber stamp Congress, the days ahead are ominously frightening. It is imperative that American citizens become alerted and informed regarding the threat to our welfare, happiness, and freedom. No American is worthy of citizenship in this great land who refuses to take an active interest in these important matters.
Stand up for, for freedom, no matter what the cost. It can help to save your soul and maybe your country. May God give us the wisdom to recognize the danger, the dangers of complacency, the threat to our freedom, and the strength to meet this danger courageously.